Hey, y'all, welcome back to the Don't Mom Alone podcast. I'm your host, Heather McFadden, and this is the place where I get the privilege of walking alongside you and connecting you with people and resources so you know that you don't mom alone. In this episode number 323, I have the privilege of introducing you to a new friend of mine, Jennifer Barnett. I've been doing this for a long time. I have never not seen Jesus show up and bring something that was desperately needed. You know, it's a it, it's an event in the prayer time. One of our foundations says it's also a process, but he's so good to finish the thing that he's authoring. He won't leave you empty. He won't leave you undone. He will keep writing it. I have not arrived at 45. I've been doing this for a long time. I just want to go ahead and say I am, I am not fully free because it's sanctification, but I look so different than I did at 18, 19, 20. And that process is really gentle. He's gracious. You don't have to keep it. You don't have to stay bound. Jen is the founder and executive director of Freedom Prayer Ministries out of Nashville, Tennessee. And she also is the co-author of Freedom Tools and a lead Freedom Prayer trainer. She is passionate about training the church in Freedom Prayer. And if you've been listening to the show for a while, you may have heard me mention here or there my own inner healing journey, my own process of growing in depth with God and experiencing Him. And I've been in the church my whole life, but no one had really talked to me about the availability of Jesus healing us in this way after we have been saved from our sins and this ongoing part of our reconciliation becoming more and more like Christ's uh, journey. So I'm thrilled to have an expert with us today who has been doing this for over 20 years and someone who has a ministry that is across the globe. So no matter where you're listening, you can connect with these resources. Uh, So definitely check out freedomprayer.org. We have, again, the links in the show notes. But today we're going to talk about what inner healing freedom prayer is, what it isn't, and she's just going to give us a little 101 so you can get a sense of what I've been talking about. And I'm excited to share it with you. This has been a long time coming. I've had my friend Kelsey Phillips on before to talk about listening to the Lord. I've had my friend Molly Rose to talk about blessing prayer. And today it is all about the freedom. So let's get right to it. Here we go. Hey, Jen, welcome to the Don't Mom Alone podcast. Hi, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, man, it's been a long time coming. All right. (laughs) Good. So I was telling you that years ago, God started me on this journey of recognizing the power of the Holy Spirit in a way that I hadn't been handed before in my upbringing and just little by little observing prayer times and then participating and then leading and I've never had an episode specifically dedicated to inner healing freedom prayer. And so thank you for trusting me. We've never met beyond this moment. (laughs) No, thank you for just opening that door. That's fantastic. I'm so excited. Well, we have a common friend, Annie Mooney, who was a, oh, she's fantastic. Yes. And she has a ministry in uh, Dallas here. And so um, she knows you. And she was in a training program I was in and we met there. And so let's just off the bat with my listeners, they've heard me talk with my friend Kelsey about listening to the Lord, my friend Molly about blessing prayer. And they've heard me reference in my episode with Mo Isom Aiken, inner healing prayer. And I've called it that whenever I've kind of thrown it into an episode, inner healing prayer. And your organization uses the phrase freedom prayer. Let's talk about that difference. Sure. So inner healing prayer is kind of the broad title for what we do in ministry and sort of like the Protestant church has lots of different denominations that agree on some similar core beliefs. We are just kind of one denomination, just as a good way to think about it, of inner healing. And inner healing prayer is going to be its own sort of type of prayer. If you're not familiar with it, we would say it's some really intentional time devoted to allowing God to remove anything that would hinder someone from a full abiding relationship with him. So that could look like sin, old sin, new sin. It could look like wounding. It could look like 
ungodly beliefs or, or lies that we believe about ourselves, God, or other people. It could look like things that we're kind of caught in and we don't know how to get out of. So that's inner healing prayer. Freedom prayer is just the name of the nonprofit ministry that I serve as executive director of, and we love all the other models. This just happens to be the one I'm sort of have some bias towards and and have known for a long time. And I think that freedom prayer, it just encompasses the scriptural basis. I feel like there are a lot of scriptural references to being set free. And so that to me is a motivator. It's biblically based. And maybe more buy-in for men and women equally? Yeah, I think so. I mean, there are lots of things that work to help people find freedom. And we're all about, you know, do those things. We felt this, this charge to be able to point biblically and say, this is the tool we use. Here's the scripture that supports it. Or actually, here's the scripture that says we should be doing this. And we have never done it before. So let's figure out how to appropriate what's true. So we're... We're really intentional about what we do being biblically based. We kind of think about it in four different buckets of scripture. The first one being believing that God God is faithful in freedom. So you you talked about the scripture about freedom, Galatians 5.1. We really believe he came to set us free, that we no longer have to walk in bondage or be burdened by that yoke of slavery again. So we go, okay, well, how do we do that? That's a beautiful scripture. You could cross stitch it over your toilet in your bathroom, (laughs) but really like, how do we, how do we appropriate this? Um, We also believe that we can apply God's responses to prayer and abiding and relationships. So all those beautiful verses about be still before the Lord, wait patiently for him, asking for greater knowledge and understanding of the Trinity in Jeremiah 29, looking to the Lord to heal our hurts and wounds. Um, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. So again, like applying what he's already said, Then we have these action verb scriptures, confession, turning from sin, releasing unforgiveness and judgment, asking God to reveal strongholds. So we go, okay, how do we do that? You're you're not likely going to do a lot of that on Sunday mornings or in small groups. We need an intentional space to actually walk into those action verbs. And then finally, we're just about intentionally bearing wealth. Southern church culture is casseroles and I'll, I'll pray for you, or maybe you'll pray right then. I love that. And I'm all about that. I think there's practical needs are good, but what if we were able to sit with people for an hour or two and say, okay, let's ask the Lord where all of this burden came from. And I'm going to sit with you till you feel better. And we're going to seek the Lord together. Mm. Yeah. Okay, man. So we have this biblical foundation and yet it's so unfamiliar to so many, particularly evangelical believers. Where yeah. is that disconnect? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, you once you start seeing this in scripture, it's like you see it everywhere. I have people all the time that go through our training and then I'll get an email and they're like, here's some more freedom prayer scriptures. And I'm like, they're not really freedom prayer scriptures. <laughs> this has just been the heart of God from the beginning. He's been about intentional relationship. And I I grew up in the church. I can remember I'm heading to college in Nashville from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, loving Jesus. But I sort of had God in this box that there were just going to be some things that I was going to have to navigate forever and ever and ever. For me personally, it was fear and anxiety, like crippling fear and anxiety. And I just thought, well, I'm going to wear that sort of like a coat, but I'm going to be this very successful Christian and those two did not mix. And, and I don't know if it's just, I was never shown how to do it, or it's just not been a topic when I was growing up in the church and I grew up in lots of different denominations. And so I, it's no one's fault. I just think, especially right now, God is very focused. It seems to me on making sure that the church is not only equipped, but that she's freed up and that she's spotless. We're, mm. She's supposed to be spotless, not perfect but spotless. And and so I see kind of this snowball happening across the globe, really, where the people of God are starting to read these scriptures that I was referencing and many more and go, wait a second, what's that? I remember reading scriptures at 18, 19, 20 and going, I don't think that I am living this abundance that I read about. And I'm pretty sure that 
when God says he has not given me a spirit of fear, I've got one. So where does that come from and why won't it go away? And so I was wrestling and just happened to be in the right place in the right time in Nashville. My dear friend and founder of Freedom Prayer, Andy Reese, so much of what we do in our core and our tools that we use, that comes from his brain with the Lord, with the Holy Spirit. And it was it was life-changing for me as, as a young person. I'm still is as a middle-aged 45-year-old <laughs> too. Hey, y'all, popping in here to tell you about one of our sponsors who helps make this show possible. It's Fab Fit Fun, which kind of goes along with freedom. What I love about Fab Fit Fun is it helps me take care of myself and moms. You know that we are at the bottom of the barrel most days. And with this spring box, which the theme is Grow Forth, I think it's inspirational for us to kind of invest in ourselves and help take care of ourselves. If you're looking for a great Mother's Day gift, this is a fantastic option. You get to go in. There are 20 female-founded brands you can choose from and customize your own box. So for me, I chose the Alice and Olivia travel bag because I had a couple trips coming up and I wanted – it was super cute. It had daisies on it. I love it. And – Maybe you don't need another bag, so maybe you're going to pick the little plant growing system or the sanitizer. You could put your phone in, and it's got a UV sanitizer. Whatever you pick, maybe some of the items aren't even for you, but you just want to have some really high-quality gifts available that you can give friends or teachers coming up to the end of the school year. Go check out FabFitFun. Customize your spring box today. Sign up now. You can get amazing products like the Alice and Olivia bag, or I chose the uh, Josie Marin argan oil that I've been using every day, or even this cocoa floss that's like tropical flavored dental floss. I would never have bought that for myself, but I love it. It's super fun. If you want to get $10 off your first box, use the coupon code DMA for Don't Mom Alone, DMA10. So use that code DMA10 to get $10 off your first box over at www.fabfitfun.com. I mean, I can resonate with so much of what you're saying of having been in the church, done all the Bible studies, and I think it was my friend Francie Winslow who gave the analogy of just clipping off the branches of so many things in my life. Like, oh, I'll read this book on jealousy because I'm having that. Or I'm re- have read this book on the anxious heart because I'm having, but never really getting to the core, to the root of the, where all these branches were coming from. And yeah. that concept, I was like, oh, I never thought about that. And then slowly God kind of introducing me to another friend who brought up the power of the Holy Spirit. And then another set of friends who had experienced freedom prayer and I mean, he wooed me slowly through relationships to become a more intimately involved with him. And I, 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 you said a relationship, it's totally what his word and his goal and the gospel is relationship with him and with others. And so do you want to talk? I feel like that's a lot of foundation. Is there any more foundation that we need to have before we get into like, what would motivate someone else? I mean, we talked about our own stories, but to motivate someone else to maybe consider? I think that, um, I mean, obviously I hold the banner for this. I could talk about this for hours and hours and hours. I think that when I have sat with people and continue to sit with people in prayer times, it's all about connection. And so most followers of Jesus know I should be praying. I'm supposed to be praying. And if they get really honest, men and women, all ages, they go, well, I I just don't feel good at it. Or I tried and it's silent. And so for me, practically freedom prayer is discipling people into a more fruitful abiding prayer life. It's about connection. And we all have baggage that stands in the way of our connection. Um, I get asked often, do you just love to sit in the ditch with people and all their (laughs) horrible stuff and trauma? And I'm like, well, if I did, something would be wrong with me. Like that's, (laughs) that's not the goal. The goal is tools to remove those things so that we are connected to the the vine as we're supposed to be. So we understand abiding with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that that's not a 10 minute prayer time or quiet time. That is just a 24 seven connected interaction. So freedom prayer is just 
some tools to get to connection so that you see men and women really walk as solid followers of Jesus. There's abundance there. They're cleaned up. And that's how you see people go on and do amazing things in the kingdom of God when those things are removed. And some people, I always want to have like the, the non-believer in my head who's like, I don't know, this is ridiculous. They say, well, Jesus already died on the cross. He already set us free from sin. Why do you keep talking about sin? We're already free from it. Why are you talking about freedom prayer? And I was given the analogy of if we were free and we were, the debt was paid. It's like, if we were standing there, the chains have been cut off, but we're still standing there with the chains hanging off our wrists. Like we're still acting as if we're bound. What, what analogy would you give to what's the difference between salvation freedom from sin and its hold and living out and abiding and connection with God? Yeah. So we tell people often in our trainings that it's a ministry of sanctification. We're supposed to go glory to glory and look more and more like Jesus every day. So we're helping people apply the finished work of Christ to the unfinished work of sanctification within us and our families and friends. And so that, that applies to everybody. I, I actually pray with non-believers sometimes who are pretty desperate and they've heard that this works and they come in and they're like, I don't really follow Jesus. And I'm like, well, I assume that you believe maybe just a little bit that he might be the real thing if you decided to sign up and come for a prayer time. And it's amazing to me that the language that I use with them is this stuff, you were not created to keep it. The reason why you are flailing and drowning and going down the toilet and can't function physically, emotionally you weren't intended to have to bear these things and keep them. There is a really good God who has the keys to get you out. And so the language to me applies to both followers of Jesus, not yet followers of Jesus. It's sanctified. Well, and even like followers of Jesus who don't believe in freedom prayer is kind of what I'm saying too. Like, they're like, I'm saved. I'm free. Why would I need more? Right. And, And it's also not like I've had heard people say, well, I don't want people to feel like there's this special club, right? These extra good Christians who've done freedom prayer. And it's like, no, these, if you read through the gospels, this is available to all of us. I mean, that's really our mission. I think for a lot of years, at least when I was a college student, you saw kind of just like with any other thing that the special people, the quote anointed people, and the, and they are, they were, And so what would that look like if thousands of people, let's just say coming out of pandemic quarantine, just flocked to two or three people? It was not supposed to be that way. I don't see it written anywhere in scripture that that's how we're supposed to navigate our heart's freedom. I think it's a birthright. I think it's Christianity 101. I mean, part of our mission is to just deposit it right in the middle of church cultures so that the majority of the congregants can operate in these basic tools and help each other get free because um, the lines are too long. I mean, the, the lines are long right now in Freedom Prayer Ministries. We're desperately trying to build them fast. The lines are long at Christian counselors, psychiatrists. I mean, no one is just idle right now post pandemic. And so now more than ever, the, the goal is that the people of God walk as sons and daughters with these tools as they were intended to from the beginning. And you mentioned counseling. I know some friends of mine, they've gone to licensed professional counselors who've done freedom prayer or EMDR. Yes. Yeah. So do those work in conjunction and do yes. you refer people to counselors or do you train counselors? How does that work? Uh, all yes, to all of that. <laughs> so um, we have really beautiful relationships with mental health professionals in in all of our cities where we have freedom prayer teams. We often have them on our church team. So in their weekly professional life, they do that. I mean, it makes sense for their skill set, their wiring. They come and serve on teams. In fact, I cannot think of a team that does not have someone like that, at least one person um, involved in serving there. We often will refer out because let's say I'm helping an individual deal with some pretty heavy stuff that has spiritual roots. I believe in this whole healing kind of aspect where the people of God link arms and everyone runs in their lane, but we work together. So I'll say, you know what? I think you would really benefit from 
some skill sets that I know enough to be dangerous, but let's send you to the one that runs in that lane well. This is my friend. I know him or her. Um, likewise, uh, we have psychiatrists and counselors that refer their clients to us because they go, we know this is spiritual at its root. And we know enough to be dangerous, but this is the lane that y'all run in. So we're going to work together. And I, I just think that's a healthy picture of ministry and no egos, no nothing. So we we do. We refer back and forth. We we share people because we're just about them getting free and whole and healed and um, want people to run in the lane that God's given them. I love that. And I a lot of times, like I'm, I'm not doing this full time like you are, but women I have prayed with, it's been kind of a moment where maybe they've done a recovery ministry, they've been in counseling for years, they're on medication and they're still stuck. Right. And so that woman might be listening right now. She's, she has gone through a lot of the motions of trying to be free of whatever wounds, like you mentioned, or sin or whatever has been passed down to her and false beliefs. And she's kind of in a stuck place. Right. And you and I were talking about how motherhood, fatherhood can kind of bring these things to the surface. Talk to us about that a little bit. I mean, I think those big events in our life are sometimes really graceful, God-given catalysts to make us go, wait a second, I'm about to pass something that I don't necessarily want to pass on to my my children, or I'm about to get married and I, I don't want to walk into this covenant relationship with some baggage that I've just kind of held locked down for years and years. And so um, those are normally really pivotal times where people go, there's some stuff and it's, it's coming out now. I mean, again, post quarantine, when we're stuck inside, you can't run, you can't hide from things that you've either made yourself too busy to deal with or denied or all that, you know, numbed, whatever it was, it's hard to hide in those really pivotal moments. And, and I would say that without question, without hesitation to the mom listening right now, you, you don't have to to keep that. You don't have to stay that way. I have been doing this for a long time. I have never not seen Jesus show up and bring something that was desperately needed. You know, it's a, it, it's an event in the prayer time. One of our foundations says it's also a process that he is so good to finish the thing that he's authoring. He won't leave you empty. He won't leave you undone. He will keep writing it. I have not arrived at 45. I've been doing this for a long time. I just want to go ahead and say I am I am not fully free because it's sanctification, but I look so different than I did at 18, 19, 20. And that process is really gentle. He's gracious. You don't have to keep it. You don't have to stay bound would be what I would say. It is so helpful to me, y'all, because I've been exposed to this praying and, you know, anecdotally here and there with friends to hear Jen communicate back to me what I've experienced is so affirming of my faith. Like, oh, we didn't just make this up. I also believe that is why it's so fantastic when we have two people praying with the person who's asking for prayer, because afterwards we can say, yeah, I saw I, I that happened. This right. <laughs> Jesus right. showed up and I agree with you. I have not had a time. And all of the times I've prayed with people that Jesus has not shown up, right? shows up, he is gracious, he is kind, he moves, the person we're praying for is changed. Now, maybe not completely, like you said, it is not a one and done, but it is a layer that gets a Mm -hmm. little deeper, that he has access and he can do the work. And then another layer may come up later, but it is never fruitless and almost without fail. The day before our appointment, the person will text and say, I don't know if I can do this. Right. right. I don't know if this is going to work for me. I think it works for other people. I don't, I just, I'm nervous. I'm scared. Whatever emotion they were feeling doubles down and the enemy is doing everything he can to keep it from happening. Right. Yeah. That I would say happens more often than not, yeah. um, we normally take some moments. So we, we actually pray in a team of three. So we, we okay. really up the ante. Yeah, We're do. like, let's, let's get let's it go, all girl. together. So three praying and one person that's being prayed. Yes. For. Okay. 
Yes. And that, that for us is really ideal because our, our third person in the room, they're the intercessor. They are praying like crazy. They're also taking Notes. Bullet point notes. Yeah. Yes. All right, we have someone called the second. They're like a wingman to yes. the lead. So when the lead goes, I don't I'm know what so, to do I right now. I don't, I'm not hearing anything. Uh-huh. I'm not seeing anything. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. They're second save the day. So it gives this little picture, I think, of what healthy church is supposed to look like, where everybody has a role. It's mm. a specific role. It's honoring because all of us have sat in that chair for the poor person who's nervous. So again, I just because I feel like it's a safeguard for my heart. I go to my own freedom prayer times about every six months, whether I believe I need one or not, it's Mm. just a safety. And without fail, I'll be driving in to to go and it should be this joyous occasion. And I'll just hear this voice that goes, well, today's the day that you're going to stop hearing from God. Okay. And they're, and they're going to know you're a fraud. And I'm like, no, no, I know that voice, but it's, if that happens to me and I've lived in this, of course it happens to someone coming in new and it, most people come in horrified. Like I have people say, I almost turned around in the parking lot or I've been sitting in the parking lot for 20 minutes and talking myself into it. And about two minutes in the presence of the Lord, again, without fail shows up in such the sweetest way. I mean, it's, I don't have words for it. I could point to my watch or to a clock and go, there he is because it just, it settles and it's unlike anything we know, like we can't manifest that. We can't fake it. Um, you know, when you're in it and I kind of think at this point in time in our church history, I feel like if Jesus was going to give a calling card for this, it would say something like, please just let me do the thing that I do best and put all the eggs in my basket. Like I just, the older I get doing this, my hands are off in the prayer time because I, I just know he does it better. I could give lots of good ideas. I, I mean, I've been in church culture long enough. I have some decent wisdom. This is so much better. I could tell someone you're free, you're beloved. Jesus could turn around and speak to them either in what they see or hear or sense in the prayer time. And it just lands completely yeah. differently. So I'm kind of like, let's just let Jesus do the thing <laughs> that he's so much better at and has always done and wants to do. And we just need to get out of the way. We have yeah. some some guideposts, some tools, some core things that can help people practically. But I don't want to be the architect or the author for someone's story when God really is about partnering with them from the beginning. So that's my favorite thing. I think that's why, honestly, we don't have to beg volunteers. I mean, this is a ministry that has an army of volunteers across the globe because they love it because we encounter God. I just, yeah. I'm done doing ministry where I don't <laughs> encounter God. I've done well, that. And, I've been and there. Afterwards, the person who's been set free in another layer will say, oh, you know, thank you guys. I'm so sorry. This took so much of your day or right. they're apologizing. I'm like, are you kidding me? Right. I'm on fire. I am. Woo, woo, woo. I could take yeah. over the globe right now. I am so excited to have seen God move again in his own unique way. And it's the Trinity at work. Oh yeah. It's the repeating who God is and the truth of who he got. It is the Holy spirit pointing to Jesus. I mean, Jesus shows up. He is without time. So he can go back to those memories with the wounds. He can repaint a literal picture. Someone has in their mind that they didn't even remember was there, but the Holy spirit will bring to mind. And I'm with you. I'm like, putting words to the experience sometimes diminishes the experience, right? but it is supernatural in a way I had never experienced in the church prior. And if we believe in a God who could send his son to earth, die on a cross, rise again, why do we stop believing in supernatural things and then take it all on ourselves to fix? Right. Well, and I think, for good or bad or in between, there have been some not so great presentation. Yeah, that's true. Not yeah. not just in inner healing, but of the supernatural. So yes, if, yes. if I were the enemy, that's exactly what I would do. I would make it so freak show, but, you know, twist and it's it. Like, he right. takes it and he twists it. He doesn't. Right. It's there. The right. supernatural is there. And he's just like, well, let's make it be so ridiculous that this whole group of church goers throws right. everything out. Right. I think that when you encounter it, it's like one of those things that 
I know the first time, long time ago that I encountered the spirit of God and it was unlike anything that I had known growing up, there was probably a part of my heart that was actually a little offended. Hmm. It was new, but then there was this other part of my heart that was so desperate and so longing. This was the answer. And, you know, you see all sorts of presentations of the spirit of God and those things that we don't talk about. I think what I love about prayer like this is that we have looked at scripture and created such healthy boundaries to know, like, you know, if, it, if God's speaking, it's going to match his, his voice. It's going to match his character in the word. Um, he often speaks his word. So we can turn around with the Bible and go, Hey, that thing that you were like, I felt like the Lord just told me this, that's Ephesians. Here it is. <laughs> it's exactly right. He would use his words. And so I think to have a really safe space to step into that with some healthy checks and balances, it's a good balance for people who are stepping in for the first time because it will offend the mind, but your heart will go, Abba, Father. Like that's that's what I've been looking for. Like Jen has been saying, this inner healing freedom prayer work is amazing. God is amazing. And what's fantastic is she can work alongside counselors to provide the freedom you're longing for. And if you're at a place where you just don't know who to call, you know you need professional help, but you don't know where to call, I'm excited to connect you with one of our sponsors. It's BetterHelp. And what they do is they assess your needs, they match you with your own licensed professional therapist, and you can start communicating with them in under 48 hours. It's professional counseling that is done securely online, and they have a broad range of expertise. It's available for clients worldwide. You just log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it really easy and free to change counselors if you need it. There are no barriers to entry, y'all. I feel like if there are any excuses you've used to not get the help that you need, those melt away when you go to betterhelp.com. And if you go to betterhelp.com slash DMA for Don't Mom Alone, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, you are going to join over a million people who've taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Don't Mom Alone listeners will get 10% off their first month if you go over to betterhelp.com slash DMA. Okay, so we're big fans. Yes. <laughs> Whoever's I'm listening, obviously a big fan. <laughs> we're maybe like, okay, yeah, okay, so what do I do? Like, how do I get access to this? Or I mean, I know you all train people and we are going to link to your website where you have whole weekends and do you have online options for training? We do. So we have several churches that because of the pandemic, we started offering Zoom and we had done that in part for foreign missionaries, people that we just couldn't get to. We've done some of theirs, but we have several churches that will do online options, which I see the Lord move just as powerfully, if not more in those, because it, again, it's like, it takes all of our human ability off. Like I can't depend on body language, you know, yeah. and Jesus is like, great, let me just do it. So we've been pleasantly surprised and just in awe of the Lord's ability there. Um, we also have teams in, in various cities across the country. We're rapidly training teams. I mean, we have a presence in Arizona, multiple cities in Texas, multiple cities in Tennessee, Nebraska, DC, Georgia, Illinois. And then we also are connected enough that we could say, okay, we don't have a freedom prayer team in this city, but here's who we know who's there. And this is where they're going to look a little different or a little the same. And so we're all pretty interconnected. Um, our heart is to meet the, the need that is just overwhelming right now. And so we're, we're already looking at trainings for next year and the year after because people want to get a hold of tools, but we can normally find you someplace that's hopefully drivable. And if not some sort of online or city option too. That's great. And they'd connect with you through the website. So, okay. So maybe she's thinking, all right, maybe I could do this. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's looking for a description 
yeah. of what that time looks like. And we, like we've said multiple times, this is unique to each person, but there are themes I've seen and maybe yes. you've, I know you've outlined them and trained yes. them. So I'll let you lead on that. Yeah. So um, they do. I, I've never had one that looks the same. And of course, that would be the case with a very vast God with so much more depth than we have. So he can be creative there. It normally looks like a person coming in. We sit and give them kind of the intro of, you know, trying to let them not be so nervous for a couple minutes. Um, we talk about the different roles that the team is going to hold. We talk about taking notes. We also do a little bit of instruction on most of the prayer time is going to be done out loud. One, because it helps us when we declare there's death and life and the power of the tongue. So much of the battle is in the mind. We say, okay, we're going to, we're going to do a lot of this out loud. That may be new, um, but it'll feel really comfortable um, as we go. We talk about the concept of repeat after me, follow my lead sort of prayers, similar to what a pastor does in a wedding. You know, he's not taking the vows. He's just helping the very nervous bride and groom remember what to say, giving them a guidepost. So we'll say, why don't you ask the Lord this, but change our words, make them yours. You know, you don't have to say it like we do. We're just taking the pressure off. So we do a little bit of that at the beginning. Um, normally the lead intercessor, the lead prayer on the team will um, say a prayer again, just to let the person kind of settle. We'll sort of check where they're at when they think about God, pray. So we have a starting point. A lot of people, that's where we start because they, they'll say something like, I've been a believer for 30 years and I have no connection to God. And we go, that's okay. There's no shame in that. Let's work on that. Um, if there's a decent connection there, um, we might just say, Lord, what do you want to start with? Um, sometimes they come in with like, I have to deal with this today. And that's normally what we deal with. If they know that they know, um, sometimes we just give the Lord room to speak and we'll say, ask him something like, will you just bring to the surface the thing that's right? You know, we all have a list of things that the Lord could speak to. We're about ripe fruit. So there's something at the top um, that the Lord knows is ready. And so we give him room to speak to that. Once we sort of have eyes on that spiritually, as we're listening to the Lord, we'll help the person start asking about sort of how that thing formed. So we have this fun little thing that we train called the fruit loop. So people come in with some fruit, maybe it's they're anxious or they're angry or they're not sleeping or they're looking at porn or they're haunted by this thing. I mean, so much fruit, all different kinds of fruit. And we're not talking, sometimes fruit people think is good fruit. Right, right. This is just whatever, whatever they come in with, whatever yeah. is like present in their life right now that is yes. coming out of their life. And sometimes, unfortunately, people think that they are the fruit. So they'll say, I must be a pervert or I'm an angry person. And we go, no, no, you weren't born that way. There was an entry point. We have a foundation that says there's always a reason there is an omnipotent God knows exactly how that got there. So we say, God, what's the root? So we have the fruit. We ask for the root. Once we get to where the door got opened or the things started, we, we do something called boot. So we're going to kick out the stuff that doesn't need to be there. So if you have judgment, we have tools to help someone forgive from the heart and release judgment. If you're believing lies, even though you know the, theologically they're not true, they feel true. We go, okay, God, let's renounce the lie, but we've got to get some truth. So that would be the loot. We're going to loot every good thing from God and get it back, get the house that's clean now, get it filled. So that could look like receiving truth. It could look like asking God for a restored identity. It could look like infilling any place where we're taking back what the enemy has stolen. And then the last step in that is scoot. And that is simply just sending people out on their way, scooting them out but with tools to keep their freedom. That's why we love equipping churches because a lot of times that looks really practical. Like, hey, you're probably not gonna keep your freedom if you're isolated. Let's get you in a small group. Let's get you with a mentor. If it's an addiction related issue, let's, let's get you to celebrate recovery. You know, all these partnerships that we have. So that's the fruit loop. So we, we have kind of a, a pattern so that everybody can do it. So nobody gets lost. There's no rabbit trails. And then, so that's the bulk of the prayer time. And again, it looks totally different every time. Fruit. Mm -hmm. Root. Root. Boot. Boot. Loot. Loot. And scoot. Scoot. 
And in that boot step, that's where we're going to do all those action verb scriptures. We're going to, you know, apply God's wisdom. We're going to take a hold of any argument that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And you can't see me right now, but I've got it like in my fist (laughs) by by the throat because that's really a game changer for people to actually learn how to do that with the Lord and go, no, wait, I don't have to let that enter in my mind again. So the boot section has what we call doing kingdom business. And that's just appropriating scripture. It's taking all those scriptures that we know we're supposed to be doing and don't know how. And that's, that's a really strong discipleship component in the freedom prayer time to say, no, you, this is how you do it. We're going to do it. We're going to help you do it so that you can do it on your own too. Yeah. I mean, and as you're going through those, I can remember prayer times with people Mm -hmm. and that is the general. Yeah. And like we might, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but a couple of things might come up that we have to see a fruit (laughs) root boot loot kind of situation. Like I think, I, we kind of follow their lead. And sometimes, like you said, my wisdom, I'd be like, all right, well, there you go. And then the person we're praying with is very quiet. And they're, we look at their body language too. I don't know if you, mm-hmm. like if all of a sudden they've gone from a joyous look or a peaceful look, and then they get real down again, I feel like something is going on. And so we'll say, Hey, are you hearing, seeing, is something coming to your mind right now? And it's another like reminder that, okay, maybe there's a little bit, something else we need to work on before we. Absolutely. And we just, we follow the Lord's lead because if they start to do that, we go, okay, we're in the presence of a really good father, like unbelievably good, better than we could ask or imagine. And he knows what you need and he's not going to manipulate. He's not going to lead you through, through some sort of corn maze and get you lost in there. Let's ask him. Sometimes we just say, Lord, is there anything else? that you would want to speak to today. Sometimes people go, I'm pretty tired. I have like eight (laughs) other things. And we go, well, that's why it's so important to have this ministry in a church because you can just come back. None of us have arrived. Like we're going to take it piece by piece, ripe fruit by ripe fruit until we, we get it, get it taken care of. And, And God's too gracious to just slam us with our whole history all at once. We couldn't stand underneath that. So we go, just Lord, what's, what's for today? What's right. And even though a lot of the gals I've prayed with leave feelings freer, lighter, we do often instruct them to recognize they kind of went through a major soul surgery mm-hmm. and to be gentle with themselves. Yes. Like it might not be the time to tell every person they run into what they just experienced because not everyone may be as kind and gentle and to like also recognize there might be some spiritual attack after to be right. on kind of guard as if you had heart surgery and they give you that pillow and they have you rest, like meet with Jesus this week, take time to be with him now that you have reconnected with him intimately, oh, you yes. know, that's part of that scoot. Like you were talking about, like, that's part of the equipping of how to go on from here. Yeah, no, I think that um, one of the kind of homework pieces we give in the scoot is just to take the notes and just sit with Jesus, Mm. no agenda other Mm -hmm. than let him remind you again, what's true. That's how you renew your mind. That's how you're, you know, you had this spiritual at your inner man core interaction with the Lord, but it can take some days or weeks or months to get your mind, your will, your emotions, your flesh in line with what the spirit did. So be gracious to yourself, be gentle that that could take some time and just sit with the Lord and let him continually, I'll say for a month, look at those notes and say, Lord, remind me what's true. We do have some people that leave and they're like super on fire for what the Lord did. And that's the beauty of having this yeah. again. I'm, I'm such an advocate for a team in a church because over time, the church culture transforms a little bit. So that if someone comes busting out of the gates and they're like, you will not believe the whole, the whole room goes, yeah, no, we do. Cause he did it for us too. And so I, different people, you know, some people hold it close, hold the cards close to their chest. Other people are like, here it is. Yeah, I'm going to tell yeah. everyone I know. And so if you have a culture where it's safe to do that, um, one of the fruits of a freedom prayer team is it makes a culture where it's safe to do that. So if someone comes 
you know, scream and yelling from the rooftops that their life looks different. I mean, I have had pastors say next to my salvation experience, this is the single most influential life-changing thing that I've ever gone through. So I, you know, I'm the same way, obviously I would want to tell someone God is so much bigger than what you think he is. And I don't know where we learned that some things are off limits. There is nothing off limits. He (laughs) wants to, to, speak to it. He wants to transform it. And so I think just building a culture that's honoring both ways is is a good thing. One of the fruits of what we do and how we train. I love it. I'm so thankful that we got to chat today and that you were on here. And I know there's thousands of conversations we could continue to have, but I will point people to your website, freedomprayer.org. And um, I'm so thankful for the work that y'all are doing. And that just like I've said, it encourages my spirit that this is God at work across the globe. And oh man, what all that it means is just so exciting. Well, I'm so thankful that the Lord just had this in your heart. And that's what I see over and over again. This is his work. Yeah. And so thank you for just opening the door even wider so people can come in. And and thanks to Annie Mooney, who is one of my very favorite people in all the world and such a beautiful freedom prayer leader. I'm so grateful just for kindred hearts in this discussion and know that we could talk for hours, but so grateful for this time. Well, thank you for trusting me and I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you. You too. I'm really thankful that I get to connect you with what God is capable of doing in your life. If you've never heard about this before, it is such an honor to be someone who opens that file folder for you. And if you're feeling resistance, if you're feeling something that's like, oh, that won't work for me, like we kind of said, I just would encourage you to pray against that and just say, take a step, take a step in the direction of healing and freedom and just trust that God is able to free anyone. There is no one too far gone for him. So I'm going to pray over us. Lord, I thank you that the truth of your gospel is that Christ died for everyone to be set free from sin. And everyone means everyone. I pray that though that sin has been dealt with, we would allow you to come in and remove anything that has rooted itself in our souls and is telling us lies about who you are, about who we are. We know that the enemy wants to attack our identity and our worth and our belief in you. And I pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit, those those lies would be dealt with, that truth would reign, and that intimacy with you would be possible because of you showing up, removing whatever is in the way, that moms would be set free so that they can lead their children with the kind of help that is available, help that's available. You reside in them, God. Your holy presence is in them. And may they have access to that because of this step, this next step to come to you for freedom. I thank you for Jen and her team and all the work that she's doing around the globe. I pray that you would give her the help, give her the strength, and thank you that you are raising up more trainers, that this is a ripple effect, that what's represented there is going on everywhere. You are raising up mighty warriors for you. I thank you, God, for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all know you can reach out to me if you have questions, concerns, want to know more. I have been super preoccupied with lots going on in my personal life and just some other things. And so just pray for me. I would love it if you would pray for me. It seems like um, there's a heaviness going on. So I would appreciate all prayers. I will meet you back here. I have an episode with my friend, Laura Williams. We're going to be talking about her journey through um, reconciling her marriage and then the end of that marriage and then the moving on. And I know that she is not alone in that journey as a mom. So join me back here for that. Y'all know you can always connect with me if you go to olaheather.com. You can sign up for emails. That's where you're going to get the latest info um, shared about a conference that I'm a part of that's happening this week. So join me over at olaheather.com. Sign up for that. 
All right. Adios. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Don't Mom Alone podcast. If you're wanting to connect with more people and more resources to help remind you that you're not alone, head over to don'tmomalone.com. That's where you'll also find show notes with any links mentioned by our guests. Most importantly, I want you to know the good news, the great news that you're not alone because God has promised to always be with you. With faith in Jesus Christ, the one who died for you and rose again, Jesus said when he left, he was going to leave a helper, a comforter to be with us. God in us, moms, that's superpower. So while you're washing dishes at your kitchen sink, while you're driving to and from work, while you're feeding that baby late into the night, while you're cleaning sticky floors, God promises to be just as present with you as when you're worshiping in a church pew. As it says in Zephaniah 317, the Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He takes great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love and he will rejoice over you with singing. Now that's good news. Have a great day.